you know, you know what the worst part of all of this is? And, and, and not the worst part, but like, I've been excited recently, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've, I've kicked up my level of content recently, up a level, because I know some crazy stuff is coming, and some fun stuff that we've been working on. I'm gonna call him. Hello? Good morning, sunshine. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dude. Dude. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I already watched your video. I already watched it. It was uh, nailed every... I thought it was funny that you got cut off. You ran out of time. There was so much I did. shit. I did. I actually... I have one on post in the night that I just recorded. I did. I just... I. First of all... You know, man, I think I just want to say that I really hope this doesn't slip past the community. Do not let Blizzard justify putting Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 in the same boat because yeah, they different. were screwed up for two very different reasons, like from the beginning of the timeline, right? Like Diablo yeah. 4 announcement was only in 2019 for obviously the, the previous year where they did the diablo mobile where they kind of baited people into thinking was diablo 4 and then like it was you guys don't have phones why would you be mad so that announcement was rushed that was in the middle of the hong kong scandal too yeah so they they announced that early that was kind of like just poor that was poor management but like we didn't expect that game till 2023 2024 and they made that pretty clear from day one Mm -hmm. Overwatch dug its own fucking grave, and it, it's completely on the leadership team's fault for that. And look, I, we, you and I have talked publicly and privately a lot about this stuff, and I'll be honest, dude, I'm sick of looking like the villain just sitting here saying these guys suck, they're terrible. Why are you so negative all the time? Look, I've got nothing to say anymore. shit a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, I get, look, man, I, I don't want to, like, who likes the fucking I told you so guy? Fucking no one does, no, right? It's, yeah. it's solution based. No one likes that. I'm not going to sit here and say that. All I'll say, man, is I would much rather be telling my friends congratulations than I'm sorry or I'm disappointed. You know, how, how, how many years, and this is the, my, my only point, how many years of I'm disappointed that actual live game is continuously neglected do we have to go through before people start raising some red flags? All, that, that's all I want. I want these people. And the good news is this is like they had to lower guidance. Actually, I think the company raised guidance, but um, – because that's because of the the mobile game sector. They have their Activision Blizzard, like the King section, the Candy Crush, with COD Mobile popping off yep. in Asia and these other regions. Even though China is hard limiting that, like an SA and uh, Europe, uh, mm -hmm. I think Asia too. The mobile gaming growth is so explosive. Like mobile gaming, if you had to guess, what what percentage of revenue of, in 2020 was uh, mobile gaming compared to console and PC? I act, well, I mean, I actually know that it's very surprising. Like they are they they make pretty much yeah. all their money. All their money yeah. is pretty much made from their no, mobile no, not, games. Not even Activision Blizzard. The entire gaming industry. Like, oh, yeah. The mobile games just make game. dumb amounts of money. 70%. 70% of gaming revenue in 2020 was from mobile games. So that's where they're catering a lot of titles. I, I think that was a big factor in Overwatch 2 going 5v5. But, dude, like, it's... it Like, the fact that they're... What, what did they say? They, they were pushing out financial uplift or something. Do you, do you, that is the last thing, the literal last thing a company ever wants to say. So that is rock bottom, which is good and bad because that means change is going to come. It's just why the hell did it take this much for like, you know, Jesse McCree was let go from a scandal. Jeff Kaplan walked out the fucking door. Yep. Like, 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 please guys. Like, I shit, I'm about to go on the, to, to the Indy again. I was there for a wedding last week and I'm going to have my red flag on that fucking NASCAR track. I'm going to be fucking sprinting <laughs> in an Overwatch shirt because please God, people wake up. This is not acceptable. Like. Oh, I just want to scream, man. I might go, like, work hours. I haven't worked out in a while, too, man. I mean, you know, I could obviously beat J3 in arm wrestling, but whatever. Um, <laughs> how are you feeling? I, dude, I almost cried. Like, you know who was in here earlier? It was Seagull. Seagull was in here listening to me rant, and, you know, I, I was I was just kind of doing it, and someone was like, you're being overdramatic. I snapped, dude. I just snapped. I was like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, I'm, dude, I'm so, like, you know how many people are affected by this? You know, it's He's still here. What's up, Seagull? Uh, if you want to join us, like, just let me know. Um, but yeah, it's it's. It, you know how many people are affected at this point? Like we were we were we were we were t blue balled in 2019. We got told everything. Games do not take f four or five years past announcement for them to come out. It doesn't happen. And, and, and you know what? Sorry, you continue. Go ahead. Have you seen this graph of Twitch viewership? Let me show you it really quick. If no, you've never seen it before, I'll, I'll give I'll give you this so for you to show off. So. 
This fire is from, fire. like, scroll down a little bit, you'll see Woot viewership from, from January of this year to now has dropped 50%. It's, it was it was a matter of time. I'm not surprised. I mean, that's what happens when you fucking uh, like you you neglect. See, here's the thing, he, and here's why it, this is so bad. It's inexcusable, and there Together, needs to be big change, strong. right? Do you think they will cancel you, Overwatch if you're gonna two in its entirety? Delay a product. Love you flat, right? And because it'd be or, or you know like announce, hey, we got another game coming out. You yep. can't leave your live game to rot. You you've mismanaged you've, yep, everything. Yep, 100%. Like you haven't just missed on one thing cuz look, delays happen. The like you no one can predict covid. No one can predict any of this stuff. You got to give them credit there. And that's why we were fair, we were reasonable. But this from from the stuff that was happening beforehand to even to even now and you don't even actively update your product when you have content creators and people Seagull is a prime example as well. You know what I said earlier? I said like what? when he, I thought he was gone. I said, "You want to know how much is a good state?" Seagull plays the game. <laughs> no, no, Flats, no, Flats I, I've seen a lot of incompetent fucking business in my life. A fucking lot of it. But when I tell you, when you have guys like Seagull, you, me, DeFran, fucking, you name it, if they were a pro, if they were a streamer, if Kabaji came out of, out of nowhere and tells them directly, you guys fucking killed it this patch. Congratulations. You should be proud of yourselves. Great fucking work. And the first thing they do is do the exact opposite of what everyone likes. You you have you have just idiots running your company. I'm sorry. These guys should have been gone. The, that was when window went ago. to a garage door, right? Yeah, that was yeah, garage yeah. door window. That was buffing Briggs health again. Yeah. After the 16 nerfs, I was do I was looking at the math earlier really for Brig, by the way. I, and again, I hate to bring this up to Brig, but it's an important issue because it, the heroes like that that replaced what made the game once great are a detriment to the game in the long term. Mm -hmm. And like. I was just looking at her stats, and I'm like, wait a minute. She heals 15 sec 15 health per second with this fire. It stacks with pack, which is like, uh, I think, 55 health per second. So Brig is healing, what is what is that math? Like uh, 70 health per second? <laughs> like yeah. stacking while peeling. It's like the, the, it's the design philosophy on top of an unwillingness to understand what the average consumer wants that makes it so that this delay is inexcusable because if they did a good job of like incentivizing people to play ladder actually like you know making the game experience on a day-to-day -day basis more enjoyable getting people who are on more of the same page and lobbies together like we've forgotten what yeah. makes games fun i you mean know, even in gm we can't fun. stack you're punished yeah. for being good at the game you know and I yeah, and I, look, I, that that one is kind of iffy too. Like Dante brought it up too. He was like, "Well, yeah. Back all in these the day, pros would be shitting on people." Yeah. I'm like, "Dude, f first of all, I think that's bullshit." I, I told him he's a good friend of mine. I fucking love the kid. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's that's fuck. You can't you can't have a successful game like that anymore. I want you to go in the Warzone section and tell me how many of those streamers successfully sit there and solo queue Warzone. It it, it doesn't happen. Like so, we have to adapt. And these guys, like. They don't. They don't have the mentality to to get in there, get in their prob into their product, be go getters, and aggressively attack issues. They haven't done it for four fucking years, and they're never going to. They won't. These these guys can't do it. That's why Jeff Kaplan walked out the fucking door. You know what <laughs> the worst part is, Sam? Though, like realistically, like I can't. I can't say everything, and I wish I could. And I kind of want to like ask if I can, because no, there was some I, cool like shit that was coming out soon. Like that they were working on like cool like events and stuff like that, and, I, yeah. and I'm and I'm working with one of them and, and it's awesome, but like it's so little so late. But like in my Don't mind, I thought it was something to like kind of hold us off until you know, I mean maybe I'm wrong on this, but I feel like most of us were expecting like May, uh, May it's June 20. July would be like Overwatch two. Maybe we get a beta a little bit before then. You know what I mean? Like from what we had heard about like being Overwatch two being played. I mean Overwatch League being played in Overwatch two like. You know, it's like summer. We, we'd probably be getting the game. You know what I mean? Like, I think we we're. I was like, oh, like this is cool. Like, cool events to get us like you know warmed up to pull us in. It's gonna be awesome. And you know, you know, then that you have this come in and just crush us. It's just like, man, I, I have I've actually been super motivated recently, and I can't describe to you how much this just killed it. Yeah. Uh, look. 
obviously we're, we're kind of all in the spot right now where we're all like saying we're disappointed rather than congrats. And it, it kind of is what it is. That viewership chart is incredibly concerning. Um, I, as for you taking that, asking you to talk about it, I wouldn't even fight that fight, my friend. It's not as someone yeah. who is like, you've seen me literally stake fucking everything to try to get through to these people. Don't fucking fight that, bro. Just ride it out. Ride it out. It's not worth it. It's True. Just, you enjoy your life. Just coast with your community because look, I mean, I've taken the last couple of months to step back and really reflect on everything. And it's just made me realize like what I'm grateful for in life. And it could always be worse. So just think about that. And I just, you know, I think that if you think about this, if you know it, I guarantee you their PR team knows it. And their PR team is actually really good. I think I think everyone at Blizzard, like, they're, dude, the skins this year were fucking awesome. Oh, they were I fantastic. Was actually, I was actually, like, really thrilled with that. I think the Halloween event was really good for the first time. And, I mean, obviously the same recycled gameplay for the fifth year in a row. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> which, which, how does that happen? How is that? Who is okay with that? I, 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 I just want to know. Like, it's hard to yeah, think by the way, we're going to, you know, here's here's our idea. It's like the Despicable Me thing, you know what I'm talking about, where the guy, like, makes the plan out. and then, it, like, bet, like, you know what I mean? He, like, mm -hmm. goes through the steps. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're going to release a game with no content. Wait, we're going to reuse the same content five years? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, yeah, no, you're not wrong. Universe, in what universe does anyone consider that acceptable? It's, it's just truly beyond me. And I'm not sure if you saw the tweet. So you know the artist that made, uh, like, the... Uh, which skin? It was like the it was the hog skin, the, the break the, skin, the break skin. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, like you killed it. Congrats, you did a great job. And he was like, well, well, unfortunately, they're not coming to me with work anymore. And I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I saw that was painful. I saw that tweet. And I look, saw it I, again. We we don't know what happens with the artists, but I just think it's just so stereotypical. Like, oh, no, Overwatch team. Yo, this guy made the best shit in years. Oh, fuck him. He's not coming back. It's like, damn. Like we were so close, man. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh. I mean, you nail oh. it. You nail it though with like, it's 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 not like, and I want to make this like abundantly clear. Like, it's not like Andy and and Jody, like their community managers. Like, honestly, like they they're stepping up. Like, they're trying to get like more, you know, transparent and trying to like talk about stuff. I know Andy goes on the forums a lot and like talks about mm -hmm. things about Overwatch Two and like, well, he can, and like honestly, that stuff's super appreciated. It's at the top. That's it's the problem. The top. That's always been the problem. There's not look. It, the top, the the horrible decision making from leadership at Blizzard has continuously for three to four years hard throttled Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Overwatch League is stuck to pick up the scraps that are left behind for them. And those people are great. They don't miss. They kick ass. The casters are always on point. The production's always on point. These guys innovate so much, and they should be damn proud of themselves. If I'm working at Overwatch League, I'm going straight to Blizzard, and I'm saying, what the fuck are you doing to us? Because not only do you make us, we publicly say, hey, we're going 5v5 for the 2022 season, right? Yep. It's, it's been a goose chase with roll queue stuff. They have to do hero <laughs> pools. Do you remember that? When the yep. pros like, didn't know what to fucking Let's get hero the bands. before? Here's pools. Hero bands, because God forbid the pros actually have a choice because they ban the same character every fucking time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, God forbid. But if I'm going to them, I'm saying you guys are making us look fucking stupid through no fault of their own because i mean it needs to be talked about well I, I think the league viewership on youtube has been pretty stable right but let's be realistic overwatch the league can only be as popular as overwatch is mm -hmm. right they, there's a there's a hard ceiling on that and the poor decisions that are made from overwatch really do hurt overwatch league and if i'm an average consumer and I, i've been queuing in plat this week flats Oh my god. Yeah, good luck, dude. That's just yeah. awful. Oh my god. If I'm an average Overwatch player and I go Q comp and that's the shit I get, why the hell would I want to watch Overwatch League? Like it's so backwards and no one is either it's either they aren't asking the questions, they're not talking about the questions. Believe it or not, you ready for a laugh at this wedding I was at? My dad called me over to his table and he goes, Sam, who's the CEO you're always getting mad at? And I go, oh, fucking Bobby. The guy was at Bobby Kodak's son's wedding with Bobby the week before. And I told him, I go, tell him to make the Overwatch team wake up. And he goes, I will. One one week later, three three days later. Yeah, Overwatch 2 delayed till 2023. Oh, it's just fucking real. You can't make this shit up. You got, hey, but flat, so wait, are you saying we all get to blame you? <laughs> yeah, honestly, do it, dude. I, I'm blaming myself. Maybe you know, maybe I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 whatever. But hey, guys, listen. It's honestly, all right. I can see it now. That's the new the new thing. It's, it's all Samito's fault. <laughs> listen, that, that was what it was in middle school too. The, the the big meme was when in doubt, blame Sam, and I took it on the chin for the boys. So. 
It's just, it, but Flats, listen, don't worry, man. It, he, Bobby only took home $220 million last year. This year, he announced that he was only going to be paid the minimum wage in California, $62,000, because that makes a big difference after you've taken home $220 million. And that extra $220 million of shareholder, of shareholder money better go straight to the fucking developers and the artists who actually pump out content for this game. Because I, if I, t you can't yep. look at the sector of Blizzard, have it be down 43% in four years, and say these guys are doing something like we, we, we're, something happened has to be wrong here we've had multiple guys in leadership walk out what what are we doing here so yeah. you know i the action side is great are you familiar with what raven studios did for for warzone no they mm. actually they hired a Thank separate you. balance team like a third party small company and their patch notes were really really good they talked about in detail exactly what they were targeting they targeted the game issues every time and that's kind of why Warzone's been able to succeed edition, so much, in my um, opinion. I mean, Mutu. obviously, free to play. The cheaters are kind of hard throttling it? the game right now oh, with yeah. you know, cheap like companies that are worth a single one of them busted for seven hundred fifty million Flex dollars in China. Try. That's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, that's nuts. yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, they have a massive problem with it. Um, because I've seen the question a few times. For anyone saying, it will Overwatch two not be released at all? No, that's that that's not, not on the table. Like you know, how, like there's been thousands of hours been already put in like that is their next way to make money they literally don't have anything else other than diablo like they don't have anything like they don't have a blizzard side thing to release to make the money and they, they're gonna when overwatch one gets released it'll probably it's gonna be a free to play for pvp and pve will be paid i don't know if that's confirmed or not but like there's so, been so many signs at this point like that's 100 percent what it's gonna be there's there's no chance it's not um and so, like, they need to to make money as a company, and that's part of the way they want to do it in their gaming sector, or at least past mobile games, because obviously mobile games do a lot. But like, they don't have any like well performing edition, games at the um, moment. Move to um, wait, how do you say it? Do you think they go? They had no, Wow, but to yeah, they blew Wow too. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, it's well, no, they'll get, uh, they'll take well. I mean, it's not really going to matter if they if they take if they go back on their decision to make to upgrade Overwatch Two for free. It doesn't matter. Overwatch Two, Overwatch One's not going to have a player base soon. Like, like, who cares if Overwatch One merges into Overwatch Two anymore? There might not yeah. be anyone in Overwatch One left. Because here's the thing. The game experience has been people's biggest issue with Overwatch for three years, and and he, and here's my thing. And I look, I might be completely fucking wrong on this, so tell me if I am. Like, look, I I respect everybody's opinion. If you, even if it's different, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. But over the years, in this team-based game, in the ranked mode, which is where everyone goes to really watch competitive streamers, they go to watch everything. Blizzard and Jeff Kaplan, especially in that era, kind of continuously made decisions that took the game away from the game that's worth seeking your time in like private I, I get private profiles i can kind of get that but like they never actually tried to enforce game integrity into their game and look man like if if you don't put game integrity into your product or integrity in your product do you actually expect your average consumer to want to put time into that your your, your streamers your your anybody well, and it's it's you know i might be wrong i, I get people no play, i agree play, I, I think honestly team game well, I mean, what if anything, what Apex Legends has taught people, when Apex died, died, let's 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 call it what it was, when it died as a game and was like 10k, 20k viewers, what they did was they reinvented one the game completely, and two, they invested in their content creators. And they went hard with it. They started. They started listening. They started trying to improve. Now they didn't get everything right, obviously, but they've they've made a, a good a good faith attempt to try to build them up. And actually, you've had a lot of their streamers that were originally like 500k or 500 viewer to 1k Andes. Now that they, they've exploded in the last year into the thousands of viewers, and they promote their game every single day. Because they enjoy playing the game. Yeah, they complain about certain things like, oh, like, it, you know what? I, I wish I was an Apex streamer and I could complain that, like, you know, <laughs> I don't like how many points I get for, because I got a bunch of kills in a ranked game. I should have got a, a couple extra points. 
Oh, okay. At least you have a healthy game that's still going. Like, like, yeah. You know, Nick Merckx just hosted a ten, a fifty thousand dollar tournament for all the streamers to play in. Oh, what's that? They also have their their pro league going. Oh, what's that? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, they invited content creators to come and 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 journalists and stuff to go test out their new map and their new content that I could participate in and try and test all their their new map and shit like three weeks ago. And they paid all of us for our time. To go there and to test it out and just literally paid us to go have fun for a couple hours and, <coughs> and give a little feedback. Wait a minute, Flats. Where are Flats. we? Yeah. Are you telling me that games are successful in the modern era when companies treat content creators like assets and actually put stuff out for them? Are you kidding? In the age of the streamer, you're telling me that the company that is actually proactive, they try to innovate, they treat the content creators and their advertisers like assets, how they are, manage to set up a win-win-win situation for their company and their product, and it's now taken off, becoming one of the most successful titles in this generation? Are you kidding? You're, you're, that's exactly what I'm saying, Sam. What, and SVV wants to join us. I'll probably is pull him a, in here in a minute. Is this, is this April 1st? For flat <laughs> on a second. Is this, is this a you, you know what? I would say yes, but you know what, Sam? They can do it because you know what happened when Tim got fed up with with Warzone and Nick Merckx got fed up with Warzone and they went to Apex? Guess what got okay. leaked that week? Vanguard. Well, yeah. <laughs> Vanguard. They went, oh, by the way, we've been working on this anti-cheat system for over a year. We know what your guys' biggest complaint. It'll be out very soon. Yeah. Oh, where'd that then, come from? And then yeah. it got leaked. <laughs> you know? And then their, uh, their file, was the, the, one of the most base files of the game got leaked, of the anti-cheat got leaked. It was really not good. The kernel, the kernel got fucking leaked. That was bad. But yeah, get SVB in here, too. I need to make a pull him in. I know he's going to love this. I, I pull him in. It's just, dude, like, you, we know they can do it. They just... Don't because no. Activision Warzone probably has a maybe 50 times bigger team than the Overwatch team. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's also different people from when the companies merge. Like, it's uh, I, look, man, I, I don't even know what to tell you. These guys, like the Blizzard, they need to hop off their high horse. They need to hop off the ego. They need to stop this bullshit fake PR crap that they do every time to just cover up the lack of effort. And they need to sit down and actually innovate and put the work in which is something they have not done for years i don't care what any of them say they've never sat down and done it you've seen it behind the scenes you know goddamn well they never have and it's it's just it's hard throttled everybody including themselves all all that streamers want is to be treated like assets and let us help that's all we've been yep. saying for freaking years let us help we have to set up win-win-win scenarios and make that healthy ecosystem of content creators advertising the product it's just, I don't and even it sucks because that's how starting doing, to bud? happen right now, what but up, it's man? like, what this up? is like, you know what I mean? Like, too late. It's it's too late. Yeah, yeah, it's too late. Too late. Uh, SVB, I am so glad you're here because the last time we got to have a little debate like this was Overwatch 2, and I was so, so, like, anti, like, like negative about it, and you were optimistic. I need your optimism in this time of my need. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I am sad. I need you right now, dude. Bro, as optimistic as he died tonight, he died. Oh shit! Died. We're fucked. We're fucked. Pull the plug. Oh no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just exhausted, man. I know I, I was, I was tuning into your stream earlier, and you know, you were just saying like you're at a loss for words. I, I'm at a loss for words, man. I always try. I always try to be like, well, l let's be understanding. Let's have a human level on this. You know, let's see, like, understand the devs. Blah 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 blah. How do you, how do you justify this one? How do you justify this one? I don't. I don't have the answer. You don't you because this they're thing? incompetent. That I've been saying for freaking years. It's freaking unreal. Can't, bro. Because it's like, because it's like they. The other thing that really kind of pees me off about this, not just the announcement that is being delayed, but the way we find out. And I kind of, have already expressed this to the developers directly. Yeah, I saw. Is that, not not in the nicest terms, but I feel at this point it has to be said. Oh, good. Yeah, but when you say the nicest terms, it's like it's like. It's actually like in my mind, super nice, professional, uh, business like, like like very articulated and said. If I was doing it not nice, be like, what the fuck are you? <laughs> what yeah, are you guys say doing? It. You'll say it how I said it, bro. Because so, <laughs> it's just like we always find out through like earnings calls or like journalist leaks. You know, even even the thing that Overwatch, the next Overwatch League season will be played on Overwatch Two. They didn't just tell us. They had like journalists say, "By the way, the Overwatch League head told me to tell you." Just fucking tell us. 
just tell us yourselves, like, are we got the plague or some shit? I know Corona's out about, <laughs> we, the we got the plague or some shit. Like, they just never give us the, I feel like what my biggest peeve is that they never give us the courtesy of just being like, here, Wait, guys, this is what's going on. Is that breaking news right now? Blizzard co-head Jen O'Neill just stepped down? Is that true? Let me go look. Uh, good, get him out. They should all go. <laughs> they should all go. They all have to go. You can't justify this. You're down 43% of your users in four years. That is like a awful stat. That is an awful stat. And I'm telling you guys, Kodak is next. If, if he can't, if Warzone, if this new COD shits the bed. What does it say, Flats? Jen O'Neill, who took over leadership of Blizzard Entertainment with Mike Yabera in August, has stepped down from that role. Activision Blizzard has announced Tuesday Yabera will continue alone as Blizzard's top executive, effective immediately. In a note to Blizzard employees and fans of the game, O'Neill said she would be taking a new role with the nonprofit women's organization Women in Games International, starting with a $1 million grant from Activision Blizzard to the organization. O'Neill said she would be leaving Activision Blizzard by the end of the year. O'Neill and Yabera took over uh, Blizzard's leadership as former president Jay Allen Brack stepped down in early August. Brack's like resignation followed, followed the state of California's filing a lawsuit alleging sexual harassment, discrimination, and retaliation against Activision Blizzard in late July. It also came after a large employee demonstration against a toxic frat boy workplace and alleged permanent uh permacreate the or or the permeate in the company blizzard entertainment in particular and an apology from activision chief executive bobby kodak uh and it basically it's it's going about the old stuff so she was one of the people that stepped in after that was before Alan the lawsuit, left. i think or was it out? Oh, that's no. She's okay. one of the people that stepped in when he left. They wanted to show. They wanted to show. So that's one of the new people. That's not even one of the old people. That's someone new. I wouldn't even read into that. That's the it's shared shared position. It's the only shared position where you usually see multiple of are like VPs because you can have vice presidents of like a lot of different roles. I, I wouldn't even read into that. It's it's the old people that need to go. That just I, hate I to say that. Scary, I really someone I really steps don't in, enjoy they just immediately that. out the door. Like <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, it's look here. Here's what's gonna happen next. This is my guess, and this is what you usually see with a lot of these big companies. There is no. Th th we are at the point, and I think SVB. We talked. I talked about it with you and Siegel and Frito a year ago uh, when we did that DPS debate where we kind of talked about this. Um, like, there's what will take for the biggest change, and we're at, unfortunately we're here. This is it. We're here. The game's delayed. The stock's down 15% tomorrow. They're down 43% in multiple years. There's no. There's no way investors can justify this negligence and incompetence because that's what it is anymore. So here's what we're gonna see. I doubt they make big changes before Overwatch 2 comes out, but you best believe if Overwatch 2 is not looking at as promising as it as it was supposed to be, that you're gonna see people get canned immediately. Mm -hmm. Really, immediately, immediately. This is what needs to happen. And I look, I I, I don't want that to happen. I, I don't even I don't even know if Blizzard, like does Overwatch even matter anymore to Blizzard as a company? Like in in the big scheme of things, I'm not even trying it to does. be like. Uh, it, it, it dramatic does. about it. it no it's it, it, look it, there's no way it's a multi-billion dollar ip they give a shit they, to say they don't give a shit that's what the investors put their money into they absolutely give a shit they're going to continue to give a shit it's it, it, i don't even know i can't even explain to you what they're doing i don't even know what to tell you i, I mean all of us are the same but we have no idea what's happening at this point but that that's what's going to happen well, there's, no, there's nobody yeah no, no, there's not a single contributor who could tell you anything more than what we've been told here yeah nobody knows anything that's facts uh, trust me I, I i i tell that i'm not lying to you when i say nobody knows anything and when the, anything that is known is nothing about this it's like when re replay codes are going to get wiped and to be honest with you we're struggling to figure that <laughs> that out oh, sometimes God, yeah. but, <laughs> but here's okay so here's that you wanted me to be a bit optimistic and here's the silver line at least we're gonna hopefully not get a cyberpunk fiasco right that's the that's true. the one silver that's line. true 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 the Thank one God silver lining is that this will actually be hopeful basically because the the one worry people had was that with the overwatch league being forced on overwatch 2 that there was going to be a lot of forced pressure from, on the devs to develop uh, deliver a, a product that they weren't ready to give out at least we know they'll take their time when they give it to the rest of us so that's something. Yeah. I don't know though. I still am a little bit confused how it's going to work with Owl though. Like, how are they going to play this pre patch? I, I assume they're going to the have their own so version, out. like their own like alpha version where they're playing on it, and it's just going to be scuffed. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> well, yeah, that, that's what I'm wondering, because it's like, presumably, the, I mean, Aaron last time said that there will be some new heroes, right? So they got, it just seems really weird to me. That's like really weird that they continue to double down and say that they'll still do Owl on Overwatch 2, because they're going to have like some new heroes and some changes, but presumably not all the changes, because otherwise, why wouldn't they just give them to us? So like, what, what are we getting? And why is it our eSport? Like, why is that the professional level gameplay? I, that's honestly kind of a good question. Um, I don't have an answer. I don't even have a, like a like a thought of answer other than like maybe they're trying to rekindle that old 2015 Overwatch beta where like you know people would watch streams and stuff and be really excited about the like Overwatch release and like they'll have a version of that with Overwatch League. But I don't know. I think I'm stretching even at that point. It just tells me they don't. They have no clue what to expect at all like it, it's I'm not, I'm not even gonna be a broken record here it's just like look man it's a mess it's a mess it's it's a big old giant pigsty hopefully it comes out even, okay i don't even blame the developers as much as like again i i'm with sam on the fact that it's it's it comes from the top down because i think probably the most of team four are as clueless as us to some extent yeah. right obviously they know more but they're probably also like they have a new like boss every day they're probably yeah. getting different instructions every day, and they're probably also just like, what are we supposed to be well, doing here? I think that they're understaffed. I mean, if you look through LinkedIn and, like, job websites, like, there's, like, major positions in there, you know? Like, it. my theory is that, like, they took the entire Overwatch 1 team and moved it Overwatch 2 to try to start building, and people had already left at that point. They hadn't really replaced them because they didn't need to just because, like, you know, like, once the game was fully built, like, having less people is not it's, it's easier to maintain but like they they haven't been able to either fill them or they haven't wanted to fill them or they've kept it low to keep you know what i mean because like realistically and, and this is actually something that's happening in our economy actually right now is the less employees you have the less money you're paying the less money you're paying the higher your profit margins are if as long as your profit margins don't you know what i mean they don't lower while you have that skeleton crew of employees I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say it's out of the realm of possibility that that team four is just understaffed and that they don't oh, have the is. manpower to be making a whole new game and keeping the current game alive. And they're not able to do either. They're trying to they're trying to like they try to shift everything to the second game, give up on the first one, and they can't even make that work. They don't have enough people for one game. Like, never mind two. Um so, like, what, what we're screwed in more than anything is, one, the current game is, is dying. And, uh, SUV, I don't know if you've seen this 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 this, uh, this chart on uh, on Overwatch viewership since uh, January has oh, dropped yeah. 50%. Um, and, and that's important because, yeah, that doesn't show you your player base because we don't get to have those numbers. They just tell us magic numbers they pull out of thin air. Um, but, like, viewership of a game is, like, correlated to... Uh, how many people play it most of the time, especially maybe not like mobile games, but like other games, like absolutely, you know, um, there's a correlation between how many people watch the content of the game slash the, the, the professional scene and how many players play the game. So yeah, my, my thing is, is like, why, what kept them from hiring people through the pandemic, through before, after, like, there's no way they couldn't find anyone they liked, right? Like there wasn't qualified individuals. I don't believe that. Well, this was this is what I was saying earlier. This is why, I, and I'll go to Sam on this because that's why I said I don't even know if Blizzard cares that much in the Overwatch franchise. Because I, 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 again, someone explained it to me. The way I see it is, if you think that there's an IP that has potential and you can see it slowly deteriorating, you have two options: abandon it completely or reinvest in it and say, okay, well, let's reinvigorate this because clearly this has potential. This can get us money. Let's put some more people on the job, get it up and going, and, and let's rake more of that money, boys. Mm -hmm. So if they care about it, surely they would put people on the job. Surely they would hire developers. But I just don't... It, it's, it's always felt like it's been understaffed for like the last two, three years. Well, even four, maybe. I mean, look, I, I think if you're going to walk the walk, you've had the opportunity to. Um, and they've just kind of chosen you know, to, to let it out to dry. And I, the, I mean, I know you guys know how they felt when we said that, but I think the proof is in the pudding and it's kind of irrefutable. Um, you know, when you look at what other titles are doing compared to this game, whether it's understaffed or, or, or not, they, they have the money and the resources, multi-billion dollar company, the market cap $750 billion. They know exactly what they're doing. They absolutely have the money to put in this game if they want to. And it's just, it's, 
you know, unfortunately, I think that no matter what who you hire or what tools you have or how you build your body if the brain is not taking the body in a healthy direction it, it won't really be to any avail and I, I i think i really really hope i the best thing that can happen to this game because look I, even if they have like three developers right even if they just have three they need to accept that the traditional blizzard balance philosophy and and philosophy about what direction to take products in general can, just does not apply to a sh team based shooter game like this like it's until that changes especially and they stop kind of ignoring the average consumer's game experience like it, it won't change anything guys like i don't even know what to do. look i i don't think anyone knows I, I if anyone comes to you and tells you that they have all the answers they never do Mm -hmm. The thing is as well though, hype is such a big part of all of this. Like balance is obviously important and how you like how you feel when you play the game is obviously the be all and end all. But like the saddest thing is it it's just bad news after bad news, right? There's not even like okay, well we're not giving you too much content, but there's stuff to be excited about. Right. It just feels like every other every month we get something to be like, Oh, okay, I'm depressed again. And you know, like meanwhile, I'm watching Valorant release like a new hero, and there's like, I, I mean, I barely play the game, and I'm like, shit, that guy looks cool. I want to play him. Yeah. And then the Apex, we're releasing a new hero, and everyone's like Thurston over it. You know, sorry, mommy, all over the comments. Is Frito in here? And it's just like, I, I miss the feeling of hype in Overwatch. I miss the feeling of optimism on it. Mm -hmm. Like You're I just right. want, yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. You know, and it's, it's uh, I just, look. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna. I, what, what do you guys think about this? So, so let's let's you know trying to take that conversation that way a little bit. What do you guys? Because I've talked about this a little bit. I've re even written documents just for for me and Nate SVB, just kind of talking about like different ways Overwatch could be like these other titles that really wouldn't require that much effort. Or sorry, not that much effort, but it's not you know a whole new game. Like why why do we never try, for example, an, an arena? Well, I guess we did deathmatch, but like or or a BR or like a massive like imagine I've talked about this I think to you SVB and Frito off stream yeah, where it's like yeah, imagine if limited edition, imagine um, if Mutu. Overwatch did like a Star Wars Wait, Battlefront S game where like it's but Overwatch versus town in a major city and there's a big event the going on and like the, the, the Omics are attacking or some shit and then you have this massive like you could pick to be a talent agent or a Overwatch agent or you know an Omnic whatever whatever it may be there's like basic soldier for each of those kids you have essentially like a battlefield star wars and then you get hero tokens to come in with your pve character like a, imagine a kid in our reinhardt and flats fucking charging in 360 earth shattering kids on objectives like just that excitement that's what gate that's what gaming is about man and overwatch has com completely lost touch with what that little fire in the belly is that makes people want to wake up every day and say you know what as a human being, I've busted my ass. I've done all this. I'm going to commit my time to this with my friends because this this really makes me wake up and smell the coffee. This makes me want to put the effort in. And, you know, it's it just there's been absolutely nothing like that and for three years, and it just won't come. So it's, it is what it is, man. I You know, it's, it's what it is. You know what's funny is I actually most – I mean, uh, some people know about this if they watch, like, my video on, like, how I got into Overwatch. But the way I, I used to be a Rainbow Six Siege pro um back on console before i came over to pc and my friends would play this 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 weird game called overwatch and i was like dude like it's kind of cartoony kind of weird i don't know i'm not about it and so i would hop on like every once in a while this is like season zero one two and then three my buddy was like diamond right and so over time over like playing like one game here two games here three games you know what i mean i was like silver and we couldn't queue anymore he was out of range and so me being like the the now former pro player who was in a shooter and not high enough ELO to play with my friends, I was like, fuck that. I'm going to get good at this game right now. <laughs> and it was the week Ironclad Bastion came out. With my, my first week of Overwatch was Ironclad Bastion. I picked that hero and went, wow, this thing is broken. I went from silver to diamond in a week. Like <laughs> it, was, it was wild. But I, I immediately was like, this game is awesome. And I was playing with my friends all the time. Then eventually I got to GM and I couldn't play with them anymore. I was too high. But I still had like, you know, like all my friends were still playing. I had one friend that was duo. Like we do a lot because he was also GM. And then, you know, over time, like people started dropping it. I went to PC. I met more people, stuff like that. You know, season eight, season nine, goats happens, brig happens. And people start to drop off and disappear, you know, Um so it was kind of like, it was kind of scary to watch everybody go. 
But now there's not a reason to bring anybody back. And like some of my friends, like sometimes they pick up Overwatch. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, like I want to like try it again and see what it's like. And they pick it up for two or three days and like, fuck that game. That game is awful. <laughs> and there's no reason to play. Like there isn't. There's there's nothing that's enticing to casuals and even competitive players anymore. Like like we both have gotten screwed. You know what I mean? Like the casual players can play about the competitive players. The competitive players can play about the casual players. We're all fucked now. Like we're all in the same boat of just fucked. Like nobody won the war. Like we just all got screwed. So like that's, that's such a key, that's such a key though because it's like that th that thing that you're talking about is exactly that's how at least in the modern era games work where it's like your friends bring you in or just seeing so something on social media brings you in because you you came in even in ironclad Bashir meta and you were like my friends are playing this this game is hype this game is 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 feels fresh I want to play it I'm having fun and. and I know player behavior where people come in and they're like, oh, a new seasonal event. Let me come in and check this game out. Mm -hmm. And they want like p casual players in particular, they want to tune in and see what's what it's all about. And if they like it, they stick around for a bit. But that's what I mean. It's just that that hype just isn't there. There's nothing to come back to. Like you said, there's no reason to be like, what did I miss out on in Overwatch? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and this is I'll let Sam talk, but I've got like a wider thing to say as well. On Apex that. does that well, you, by you the way. No, you go, you go, dude. I, I was just going to pose a question. You go ahead. I was going to say, because this is like, I don't even know if this is a negative or a positive, but I'm going to say it anyways, where it's like, I wonder if none of this even matters because the game is like so dead that it doesn't even matter that we don't get anything because it, it'll all just, the cookie will all crumble on Overwatch 2. Like we're already matters. crumbling and we don't realize yeah. it? Yeah, like it doesn't matter. Like what, what, what does it matter if we get a few more scraps and crumbs to tide us over for another year? Because in the grand scheme of things, is it, are we really going to be stealing any significant number of players and viewers from Valorant, Apex, even, you know, CSGO, MOBAs? Like, are we really, if we got mm -hmm. something new? And so not I feel the like in, point, in the current state, if it felt good like a year ago, maybe yes. Yeah, I think he's right. I agree with Flatsman. Yeah, I think, I think we missed the boat is what I'm saying. Like, I think we, the boat is, has sailed. And it's like, at this point, even this announcement that the game is like officially even for further delayed and even deader what does it matter like what does that ripple in the pond matter when it's been raining for 10 years <laughs> I, I think you're right i mean the, the, for, I, honestly i don't know what you say can i pose a question real quick SVB yeah, yeah. for both of you yeah go so, for it, man. i want to pose a question and then kind of an answer something that flat said that i think is really important so w question is where would you guys start to fix the game and the th comment I want to make before you guys answer that is, Flats, I think you are really spot on with the point about your friends coming back to play the game. This actually happened to my IRL friends recently. They're actually playing right now. We're trying to get top 500 deathmatch. And uh, the most crucial like point of that is friends. Like We forget the most basic thing about playing games with your friends are like mm -hmm. the most fun and the best way to play it. Like If you can do it with the boys, for example, like my guys, like I grew up with the kids. Like I play literally baseball with the kids I play games with nowadays, right? Like we like, I've known these guys for like 15 years and the most enjoyable time we have is when we all get on together and do it. And like Overwatch is a game like quite literally punishes you for trying to do that. And it just, it doesn't work. People need to understand that. So like for me personally, how I what I would do to start to fix this game immediately is find a way to encourage group play to be rewarded instead of punished because I could play anything like flats. The, you talked about the rank gap. If we added like some kind of clan system, where I know we've talked this is a broken record before we do anything like that. If we added like a clan system or a stacking system where like the SR doesn't really matter, where like you have a group SR reflective of your group and you mm -hmm. just play together with your friends, man, I could sink so many hours into that every day, like win or lose, because it's my friends. I know we're trying to improve together and we're trying to get have fun together and those are the memories that i want to hold on to the rest of my life mm -hmm. you know is like those games with my friends and it's just it gets you get punished for that in overwatch it's like what are we what are we doing now what, what would you, if you guys could go in and like and, and really try to reshape overwatch like would you axe overwatch one and just say fuck it we're screwed we're going to go to overwatch two which is what i think they might have done or what, what would you what, what's your plan of action i think axing anything is just a terrible idea like Agreed. like anytime like you're deciding to, to shift your focus like and I do this in content, for example. Every once in a while, I shift from casual content to more competitive content than back to casual content. And I can literally show you my roadmap because after a certain point, I can't take it. You know what I mean? Like the casual content is, is it's nice. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, it's fun bringing something new, like, like the spectating bronze series I did. Like people loved that series and they still do. And like that playlist gets so many views over time. It's crazy. But it's not something I enjoy doing every day. 
because I like to play the game. I like to be a gamer. I like to actually play it, not just sit there and react Andy to to all like to people wanting like the attention for it. And the the way I balance that is by having a little bit of both and then focusing on whatever one is more prevalent at the time. So like more recently, I've done more like ranked competitive, but also like more talking points, more Overwatch 2, more like uh, discussion base, more like stuff that like, you know, people that play Overwatch every day, like not just the casual who are looking for some like, you know, quick Overwatch fix that don't really play games that often uh, or don't play Overwatch that often. And the point of that with Overwatch would be, yes, you can put your main focus on Overwatch 2, but the fact that we didn't get a balance patch on Overwatch 1 for two months, and then we got an experimental, which was nice, you know what I mean? Like, it was a crazy experimental. Cool, let's try some new stuff. People reacted poorly to it, which was to be expected. Um, and then we haven't heard anything since, and the experimental's gone. So, like, I don't even know what's happening with that. But the but the, the overarching one is the experimental being kind of wacky and fun. I'm cool with that. But mm. also, let's also say, hey... The game feels kind of stale and boring right now. Double Shield, which is a meta that they have per- they have recognized is not fun, has pretty much returned. Um, they've realized that the like everything's kind of getting played, but at the same time, like it's mostly because people don't want to play Double Shield that often, and Double Shield will pretty much wreck anything. But barring like some maps, you can run like some dive or some some ball comps or something and like maybe get away with it. But, but regardless though, the game is currently in a boring state and a boring balance and, and you can't start to attract people back. If the current people who are hardcore players every day don't have any fun at all, like how are you going to bring in somebody that, you know, doesn't play the game at all and picks it up and they don't care that, you know, they don't care about the teamwork. They don't care about, um, the dynamics between heroes they don't care that like you know like you if you play these these heroes together you can play this particular play style they don't care about that type of stuff they just want to have some fun they can't do that it, it it's not gonna be fun for them because if they pick reinhardt and they start walking forward with their shield and the other guy is playing roadhog and ball the guy can't walk on anybody. There's nobody there for them to walk on. So they sit there, hold their shield till it breaks, and then they fall over from the Echo and 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 Hanzo that or Soldier that was sitting there shooting at them. And then they just sit there and they throw their 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 keyboard and they complain. They didn't have fun. So where do you start? Well, realistically, the the number one step is making the game somewhat enjoyable again. It does like like we have to recognize that certain things are just not good and fun right now. Like. The current meta is just terrible for the game. And, uh, you know, you can obviously see, like, the casual comments like, oh, who cares? It's only for people that are playing the game every day. Like, it's fresh for me. Yeah, but if it's not fun at, when you play it every day, how are you going to want to play it every day? If you don't play it every day, you why do you think you don't play it every day? Because it's probably not fucking very fun. Yeah, if you had more time in your day, imagine if you go home from work every day and you were excited to play. Imagine. But instead, like, I play a couple hours a week. Whatever. It's fine for me. Yeah, really. So you don't play that often. You only play a little bit because it's not that fucking fun. But imagine if it was fun. You'd want to rush home from work, rush home from school, and you'd want to get on and play. That's number one, making people want to play it. And if you can make it enjoyable for those people that play all the time, those casual players that don't play very often are going to be itching to get home and hop on with their friends and play. So you can sit there in your little bubble and be like, oh, it's not. It's fun for me because I don't play that often. It's fresh for me all the time. You guys just overplay it. Bullshit. If it was fun for us, it would be a hundred times more fun for you. And that's what we're trying to fight for. We're not trying to fight so you just have a tiny bit of fun. We're trying to fight so we have some and you have a hundred times more. That's what it is. You, people are too. Your your mindset is 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 almost selfish in that point. You're not thinking beyond that point. That's the first thing that you have to do. And it's not unrealistic. There's literally look, look at this right here. You say I'm unrealistic. I've been watching you in chat, dude. Honestly, your takes have been terrible. Look at this. October seventeenth, <laughs> twenty twenty. Seagulls video. Overwatch the best it's ever been. Seriously, people came and fucking praised this game and said it was awesome and said that they had really worked and fixed it and they had done a lot of good things and then they they broke it and they ruined it. So what could have been we split into two timelines. From this point we split into two timelines. One where then they started to give like little bits of content, maybe a tournament here, maybe some more skins here, maybe a streamer event there and all of a sudden 
Just like Apex coming out of the ashes starts to come back to life. It might not come back to the same level as Apex because it doesn't have the content to drive it. But all of a sudden, it's no longer dying. It's back on a sustained path. Instead of going from from uh, from 20,000 viewer average to 10,000 in 10 months, it stays at 20,000 for 10 months, which is a massively different change. Instead, the timeline split and our side trashed it. And all of a sudden, the game was no longer fun to play, which is the whole point of the goddamn game. It's no longer fun. I think fun. that's one thing that doesn't, that doesn't get talked about enough as well. Like, maybe, maybe we talk about it a lot, but I feel like a lot of, especially on the Blizzard side, it's just like, if they just farmed content creators, that would be a huge boost. Like, if you just, like, and, and I think one of the reasons, whenever this discussion comes up, people always think I'm talking about me. Like, I don't know. No one's talking about me. No one's talking about... No one gives a fuck when SVB's playing a new game. But people give a fuck when Seagull's playing a new game. They give a fuck when Defran or Kabaji or all the biggest fucking streamers play the game. If they just farmed Seagull and they were like, Seagull, what would make you happy? Or when SQC comes back. When SQC comes back, he fucking had like three times the viewers that Overwatch normally does on his fucking own. It's like... He had, just he had an Overwatch League on his stream. Yeah, literally. Just, just go to him and be like... Go to Seagull and be like, Seagull... What what makes you happy about this game right now? Like, what can we do that would just make you want to play or watch a little bit more? And if Seagull's like, yo, bro, just give me a tournament this weekend. And then they're like, all right, here we put it in. Like, that alone, forget everything else. I've, like, been pondering some ideas. But that alone is just, like, such a huge boost. Because, again, it's that hype factor. I don't think... That's, it's not even quantifiable scientifically to be, like, people are talking about this game. People, like... That's the reason all like all of us here have tried other games, right? Like Flats, I know you tried a lot of Apex and stuff. I tried a lot of Apex. No, I haven't seen the offline games. TV podcast. Why didn't take, we try you, those games? Can you get it to me somehow? Because other people are playing it. Oh, I mm -hmm. think you're muted. Sorry, no, I muted it to answer. Ask, someone said oh, all right. offline TV has a podcast and they were talking Overwatch. I asked if they had a, a copy of it. I could see really quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I didn't like, want to interrupt you, though. Like, why, why did you play Apex, right? Because other people were, were, were making it. Yeah, well, my friends started playing it and we had fun. Exactly. And it's just like that feeling of like, oh shit, Seagull's playing Overwatch again? What's going on? Is Overwatch good now? Is Overwatch fun now? Like that's one thing. Um, one thing I want to I wanna bring in from left field here. I don't know if this has been brought up yet. Do you guys not miss when we had like movies and shorts? Because I think that's they another so thing that, gets, yeah, that gets so good. That gets uh underappreciated is that when I look at other games, I look at League of Legends, and these fuckers be churning out like full on TV shows. And I swear, half of League of Legends hype comes from the fact that people are genuinely invested in the characters. And mm -hmm. I think Overwatch has the best lore and characters out of any game. Like, people oh, absolutely. are still making Rule 13 Overwatch, like, five years after anything came out. And Apex, like, Overwatch could easily trounce all these, all these suckers. And people get hyped about Apex's, like, half-ass story. But imagine if we just had... Like, that's not even something that diverse development resources. Just, just make a fucking movie. Make a short. You know, like make another animated movie. Wasn't this supposed to be like a Netflix ad adaptation yeah, I was that got dropped? That. Yeah. I, I have know. no idea. I need to run to the bathroom real quick. But I think there was something. I think it got dropped. But my before I before I go, we all I'll go on for a sec. But my personal thing is, I'm not big on the shorts, um, personally. But I know people love them, and that's a huge part of like community building and building attachment to your game and character building. You know what I mean? Like personally, for me, I, I, it's not like a huge thing, but like. For example, though, I cannot lie, like the Rhine one was really cool. That's a hero I play a lot and I, 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 you know, I'm more known for, you know what I mean? And that's something I can point to and people can point to and be like, holy shit, you know, this person like you're you want to you're going to play like this scene or like this thing, you know what I mean? And it's like and you can kind of you have something like almost to I don't want to use the word fantasize, but almost kind of fantasize like you're doing the quote unquote same thing. You get what I'm saying? Like being the yeah. crusader, which is cool. Um, especially from a point where, you know, that's very different than like a competitive, like you're trying to be like a professional player, but that's only like 1% of the, you know, like maybe like five, 10% total of the whole game. The other 90% are more casual and they don't care about that kind of stuff. That's the people that would love that kind of stuff more than anything. And even those competitive players love it too. So like, you know, it, I, I, I don't know how else to say this, but I'm just going to say what I say what I, cause I don't know how else to say it. It just kind of feels lazy. It is, you know, like that's it. Like, there's nothing anymore. League didn't didn't leagues like League 2020 have like a whole like 4D build or like some shit where like it was like a movie going on like at their halftime show and stuff. You know, like 
Fuck, man. Like, there was so much shit that kind of happened. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Well, I mean, you, get, you, get what you, put, you get what you put in. Yeah, right? like, exactly. League, League puts back. in effort. They, they put in all the thing, and, like, they get the result. I think the yeah. other thing about this, yeah, Sam, is it's like, we always, we always, like, I think, again, game development isn't just, like, one thing. I mean, obviously, what do I know, really, in the big picture? But from the outside looking in, you got to remember that we're, we're talking with such diverse audiences, right? Like, we can fix the balance, quote unquote, fix it. And we can add tournament modes. But then mm. there's also, yeah, like, the people who the just care about lore, right? Like, like Flats is saying, like, okay, I don't care about uh, a, a new lore per se. But, again, it's all part of the ecosystem where, like, it brings in hype. It brings in yeah. excitement. Because people look like people watch the Reinhardt lore and they're like, oh shit. It look, just reminds you, them. Look at my hero pool, SGB. Do you want to know what made me play Hanzo Genji? The shorts. Right. The dragon the shorts. Short. The reason why I was a, a, a Genji Hanzo player was because of dragons. That's what got me into the game. That made, that made me want to commit. And look, for me, I, I, I want a three step plan. One, you need to have the, a solid foundation. You need your game experience to be good. That's step number one. Because it, it, if the shorts are good and the game experience is shit, you have what it felt like when the, when the Havana came out in 2019 and there was the short of Genji slashing the motorcycle. But guess oh, what that meta was that was? Thick. Yeah, guess what meta that was, Goat. So these kids would get on, pick Genji, <laughs> and just get dumpstered. And it's like, dude, what? What in the world? So foundation number one, you need a, you need a solid game experience with good balance like to start it off. They balance Two, game. then you can build lore. You can build your casual audience because when they sit down, they actually come in and play. They, they are actually given the experience that they that was promised them, that was showed to them, right? And then three, that's when you kind of need to have content consistently rolling out. You'd be working with your content creators, treating them like assets. It's the age of the streamer. Streaming has become mainstream. You need streamers on your side if you want your game to succeed. And if you channel those two thing, those three things really well, you can make a cycle of just a really good ecosystem of a game that builds on itself. And you essentially have Minecraft. That's what Minecraft does so well. You have the server networks. You have the content creators that work with Mojang. You have their events where they vote on the next mob to come in the game. And there's a reason why it's the most successful game of all time. Selling over 200 million copies of the game selling mm -hmm. not even free and if you look at their chart the one thing i love to pick up is google trends and comparing the search results between different titles overwatch is the only title in the last five years especially as a game of the year winning title the only shooter in 15 plus years to win game of the year is also the only game in the last the mainstream game in the last five or six years including rocket league by the way who has not had a year peak higher than the previous year in five straight years. I'm not saying you have to be at all-time highs, but you know what? If you can't manage to generate more hype for your game amongst consumers than the previous year for five years in a row, you're doing something wrong, and yep. it's it, it needs to change. It needs to change. And if this is not the big red flag for it, man, look, let's enjoy what we got. We had a good run, and, you know, this game will never completely go away, but it might just TF2 and might, you know... You're just sad, you know, because because the content creators deserve better, the player mm -hmm. base deserves better, the employees deserve better, Blizzard deserves better, everyone deserves better, and it just really sucks again to, you know, I, look, I I think when Overwatch Two does come out, there's gonna be that three or four months that the game absolutely pops off 100, percent but I don't think anyone here is concerned with that two or three months. It's it's what happens after mm -hmm. those months that we don't want to repeat, and it's mm -hmm. it's just when you look at what happened to the rest of the industry with their titles and what they've done, it's just inexcusable. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. I uh I sent you guys a, a link in the in the chat. I'm gonna watch it really quick uh, on oh, stream. Um, yeah, gonna... If you guys want to watch it too, it's apparently offline TV podcast talking about working with Riot and Blizzard really quick. Oh uh, well. Yeah, yeah. Let's have. A I feel like relatively they balance their game better than other the other games. Uh, whereas like in Blizzard you have like Overwatch balance, which is as a casual player going back to Overwatch. And realizing that they lock you into roles, and when you play, when you queue for stuff, and you can't pick whatever character you want to play, you're forced to only play like two, 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 is the most ridiculous, fucking awful decision I've ever seen. The entire appeal of that game is that the flexibility is fun, you know, and the fact that they weren't able to balance uh, goats or whatever it was called, and just ended up putting a bandaid on the game that ended up affecting everyone terrible they're fucking no fuck uh, it's so so stupid um i think that right and i'll so i there's a lot of question marks in chat before you guys question mark here's the thing we are the outliers we are the people yes. that actually still play this dog shit game 
We're the people who every single day come back and still play. He is a casual. They do not enjoy the game anymore from 222. 222 for us was good because of how how bad the game had had deteriorated at that point. But in all honesty, was a band-aid in some sort. It was yeah. also bringing structure to the game because people hated to have like the game, the, the, you know, you also look at my hand chat. Look at this. I am so stressed. I'm actually twitching. Look at this. Have you guys ever seen me twitch before? Like ever? Like, no, like it's actually insane, but the casual players didn't enjoy it. The, the people like us, we liked roll queue, but everything they did, did like all the balance they've done after it has just been terrible. So, and, and remember when Roll Key was released, we were promised that the game was going to be completely rebalanced, right? And like everything was going to change. <laughs> Didn't it take like a year and a half to even get close a to a, a rebalance? A so, a year double shield. Yeah. here's the thing, and I haven't even watched the whole thing. And I don't really think I even need to. The casuals did not enjoy the changes that have been made, don't enjoy the balance philosophy, don't enjoy changes. We don't enjoy them either. Because they're trying to they're tr they try to satisfy everybody at once, but it's like realistically, like if we go back to season ten, I, I, I'm trying to put on. Hang on, where's where's I don't have a tinfoil hat, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this can on my head. I'm putting I'm put I'm I'm, I'm channeling my inner Samito here. Oh no! If we oh, just no. got rid of Brig back in season ten and eleven when goats became rampant and forced all these all this shit to happen, well, guess what? The casuals would have still been happy, and we would have probably been happy because we hated Brig, and they hated the roll queue. Roll queue is the solution to Brig, our and and without getting rid of her, and that brought the game into a terrible state. But here's the problem, though. That's the type of thinking that has gone all the way down the line. I personally, I personally enjoy two 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 because it brought structure to the game. Casuals hated it. So if you honestly wanted to, and let's go back in the time machine, Thank you. if you wanted Instant to balance it at that point, you had to realize that, that hero was broken and could have kept it the same way it was. There was a single single factor that changed everything. But instead of realizing and, and understanding the mistake, they, they, they double, triple, quadruple down on it. And I'm using Brig because Brig is the... Uh, the big one. I, I I don't know how else to say it. It's the, the big one. Poster child of yeah. Overwatch's yeah. failure. Yeah, it's yeah, 100%. it's it's the easiest one to point to. And other community, you know what I always see? I see PvP over in fucking um in Apex when they released Seer. You know what happened with Seer? Seer came out and was OP as shit. And people were like, uh-oh, is this the brig of, of, of Apex? And Apex went, no, 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 we're sorry. And put that shit in the fucking ground. Just like they took they took Seer. They put it like they put the nail in the head a little bit, and then they went boop, 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 and just they just fucking <laughs> slammed that shit down and made that shit almost borderline unplayable. But you know what it did? All the casuals came in and loved it and thought it was sick, and they loved the new event. And then once a few weeks went by, and the casuals kind of died down a little bit, they came back in for their normal competitive players that play all the day, went boop, and slapped that shit down. So you know what they did? They built hype. They built hype. They released this broken character. The casuals had fun. The, the pros complained. Two weeks later, boop, they just killed it off. So all the casuals are like, oh, what the fuck? The hero sucks now. But most of them were on their way out the door anyways because they had already enjoyed the content. So then all the pro players and the people that actually play every day then were back to normal and enjoyed their shit. And you know what? They came back two weeks later because the split happens. Then the split happens. The, the game kind of goes quiet for, for four weeks with King's Canyon. It goes kind of quiet. You don't hear that much from the Apex community. And guess what? Boop! Now they came up with a new map, uh, new hero, new guns, new mechanics. A an entire like a gameplay philosophy has changed where there's PvE mobs in the game that you can fight for loot now. Like That's a totally new concept that they brought into the game. And all the casuals come running back. They're like, oh, this is great. So you know where that the, 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 the big fault lies in all of that? Is... What? There's never the content for us to one bring those people in. Two, they then don't nerf it after they realize it's too broken. And three, there's never even a, a thing to nerf because it sucks and there's nothing anything there. 
So you can't even have this cycle of appeasing the casuals and then saying fuck the casuals and appease. No, first, you appease the casuals and say fuck the competitive players. Then you say fuck the casuals and, uh, and, and, and appease the competitive players. And then you release new content and repeat the cycle. And everybody ends up happy in the end because everyone gets something and everyone doesn't get something. But everyone got something in the end. All of us just get to go fuck ourselves. Yeah. So let, let me add, before we open this can of worms, I think you're spot on on a lot of those things. Um, before we open the open, open the can of worms of open Q versus roll Q, uh, SVB, we talked about this. That Frito yeah, will be either. going off right now. <laughs> um, I can imagine. I, I would tell you, you, you know what the first thing? I, uh, yeah, you do. What is what is the first thing I would do if I had if they, if I had five minutes to make a decision for this game? What's the first thing I would do? Would you want to do roll Q? No, I delete break from the game. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought like a, that hero, okay. that hero yeah, I, was gone immediately. Uh, you said Keanu. five minutes, dude. If you said ten seconds, then I would have got it. You got to break. Okay. Four All right. Touche. Touche. The first thing that needs to happen is that hero needs to get dumpstered. If it's proven anything, after what a dozen nerfs, she is still the best support in the game, and you cannot like. I, I think Siegel talked a lot about AOE healing. DeFran talked a lot about AOE healing. It doesn't work in this format, right? Open Q, roll Q. It's a, it's a, it's a really tough decision because there's a lot of benefits that come from roll Q. SVB, don't hate me, right? I think if we encourage a team Q and players grouping with their friends more consistently, right? Especially in a 5v5 format, I think it's much more doable. And Blizzard did not need a crutch to balance characters properly. Which is which, like roll Q or not, I've been an advocate for roll Q the last two years. It absolutely was a crutch to poor hero balance. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they don't know what they're talking about. And do we think? Let me ask you guys this. Thank you. Because I'm do unsure now myself. I'm okay with trying new things. Right. The important Roll thing is, if it doesn't work, and it clearly doesn't work, we need to backtrack and say, look, you're no one's going to be right 100% of the time. Like, so if it doesn't work, like when Brig clearly doesn't work for the game, just take it out and find a way to make it go in a healthy way. But do you guys think that Overwatch can reach its true potential in a roll key format? And the truth be told mm. is, I, I don't know if it can. Because we've had what? Two, not with the current philosophy. Years. Now, now let, let me say this. I think in October of last year, when the game was healthy, and most importantly, the DLC heroes were not dominating the game, which is usually what it is, because a lot of these characters fundamentally do too much, right? I, I do think the game was kind of at its potential, and I think that Roll Q was something that even the casual players could stomach when the game felt that good. But it's it's a it's a very very up in the air kind of question that like I look I'm not going to pretend to sit here and, ha and say that I have an answer to I don't think anybody really does but what do you, what do you guys think Thanks. do you think that think if the game was better balanced tank, and better maintained that the best way to do you, balance the do you game, think that open key would be a better option and do you think that roll key this open key oh, he sucks I'm going to be honest open key well, sucks <laughs> see the thing this, the, the thing I feel about this is that this discussion is really really difficult and really nuanced because really like you said it yourself Sam like no one really has the answer because we we didn't foresee the future, right? But the the thing that's tragic about this, because the the answer is it depends who you ask. Because mm -hmm. if you ask that guy in the video we just watched, he thinks, "Fuck yeah, I hated roll queue, go back to open queue." But again, if you ask the people who play right now, probably nine out of ten of them will say, "Well, okay. thank God I don't I don't yeah. live yeah. in five DPS I live in five DPS lock land anymore, right?" Because that was open queue. The thing is though, what's really tragic about all of this is it's all. All the major changes that have come in Overwatch in the last three, four years and that will come in Overwatch 2 have been motivated by the negative uh, negative reasons, basically. So open queue to roll queue came because A, they couldn't balance goats, but also from the casual perspective, because of that five DPS lock, like they just could not con, convince, force anyone to not just lock DPS, yep. right? So And it made mm. the, the common person's experience a little bit miserable, although yeah. now we might look back at it and look at it fondly. Then roll Q222 to now 122 is again because they just cannot figure out a way to get two tanks to balance properly when they're paired together. Mm -hmm. So the problem that I see is it's not so much that was open Q the correct decision, was roll Q the correct decision. The, the, the thing that I see is the problem is that they all came from negative reasons. They didn't Thanks. come because they thought this was the best decision for the game. Like I, 
I, I, you know, flat. So we were there. We had that chat about five v five. I think there's a lot of ways that it could be cool. Mm -hmm. The sad thing is that it came. It didn't come because they were like, you know what? Maybe five v five is the best way to realize Overwatch, the dream that we had when we made this game. The sad thing is that probably the primary concerns were we can't balance two tanks properly, and nobody will play tank, so we need to cut the queue times down. Yep, I agree. 100%. And that's the real tragedy. Mm -hmm. well, if you remember, I know Flats back me up here. Do you remember how good queues were in October of last year? Oh, they were fast. They were fast on every roll. And do you want to know why that was? Because the game was fun. <laughs> exactly. Because they had really done a great job of, of implementing the DLC heroes into the game. And their Brig was not oppressive. The game's never... When Brig's been meta, the game's just not been good. I'm sorry. She just... She gate keeps fun. I, I'm someone who's had to play that character a lot. Of, I, I know a lot of people just kind of see me as a Brig hater. And I'm like, I, I get it. I am. But the reason why I hate the character so <laughs> much is also are. because I know how broken it is. And as someone who had to play that in GOATS, and then I played a lot and just in ranked as well, like it... I'm telling you, this game cannot thrive when that character is in it. It just, it won't happen. It will not happen. The and it's just, yeah, you you're not wrong. The problem you're, you're is good. like, you're good. I'm gonna, their philosophy. I'm gonna try and devil's advocate here because I, I, I agree with you guys, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and provide a different POV, which is that I don't know if the majority of the player base even, even realizes or gives a fuck about anything to do with Brig. They don't, unfortunately. In plat games, in, in, in gold she's, games, does anyone even play Brig? No one plays she's bad. Brig. She's bad, and here's why she's bad. I've been trying to play the past two days, and I'm like, I'm existing, but the, the problem is, this is why it's it's so bad. It just should have been removed. Like, She's meant to be an entry-level character, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why, to be fair, and I think if you guys agree with me here, because we can move on from Brig discussion we want, but I think that the, the real nail in the coffin to Overwatch was when Brig came out the way she did. That was like the, the that was the last time that we did not see an upward trend from like uh, uh I actually uh, disagree with that. And, it I, wasn't and even I'll tell you why. Though. It wasn't even just Brig. Yeah, go oh, ahead. you go ahead. You go I'll ahead. disagree with that and I'll tell you why. I I am totally actually after playing Apex, I'm totally down with releasing broken characters. Like, yeah, like agree, broken agree. as fuck. Like you, do you think like, it, the the means but, as to how that happens is important? But here, I'm not I'm not done yet. Listen. Oh yeah, you go. Broken, fucking stupid, dominate the game. But you have to release it understanding that that's going to be broken and you're willing to change very quickly. What Apex did with Seer is it was the first one. They gave him wall hacks. They gave him uh, a stun through walls. They gave him damage through walls. They gave him a heartbeat sensor. They gave him a, an ult that was literally an AOE uh, uh, footstep tracking bubble. There's no shot. They didn't know that, that was going to be the most broken character they've ever released. But they knew that they had to put it in the ground quick. And I think the first patch was supposed to be them balancing it to what they actually thought the game was supposed to be. Realized, though, it wasn't enough. And then they went overboard and put them in the ground. If that's the philosophy, that honestly works a little bit better. Because what you can do is have this hype in the beginning when a hero is released and they're fun and they're powerful. And when you play that hero, you're like, oh my God, this hero is fucking sick. Like, like I can take over the game, right? Now, from a competitive standpoint, that's obviously not that good, which is why they don't leave it there for more than two weeks, a week or two. Let people come in, try it, play it, love it, fall in love, have their fun, and then they're going to start to play it less and less, and they'll play other stuff, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, the, mm -hmm. instead of, like, getting into a game, they go to lock the new hero, someone else locks it, and they leave, they'll just stay. They're like, oh, I'll just play this game, you know what I mean? Like, I'll let them play it, it's not a big deal. You gotta, you know what I mean? Like when you when a new hero comes out, like especially when it used to come out on PTR, you get into PTR, you go join in, someone takes the hero, oh, yeah. five people <laughs> leave, right? Yeah. But after a certain point, if somebody takes the new hero, everybody still plays, right? That's what they kind of are looking for is those casuals and those people that have come back to the game, picking up that new hero and enjoying it and playing it. And then once they are like, okay, it's been about a week or two, you know, this hero is fucking br busted, then they they nerf it hard and they try to put it in line to where they think it should be in the game. They're going to get it right sometimes. They're not going to get it right sometimes. And then if they realize that they didn't get it right, there needs to be a second patch that comes quickly, like within another week, to really rebalance it at that point so it doesn't take over and ruin your game. Don't forget, we are some of the most tolerant fuckers on the planet. Like it, We have been dealing oh, yeah. with this shit for years at this point <laughs> with broken shit. They, if we had a shit that was busted for two weeks and got fixed, we'd be fucking singing hallelujah. This is the greatest I, thing ever. It'd be like, so, yeah. So other yeah. games have no idea how good they have it yeah. when they see them. When I see them whining about like yeah. 2% crap. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm okay with it coming out strong because if a hero comes out and it's weak as fuck, people aren't going to enjoy it. They're going to be like, oh, this hero sucks. I'm not playing it. Fuck that. So it builds a hype for the game and it builds like it's a good thing for them. And it's a good thing for us as creators, too, because like tons of people come in and they want to see how does the best players play with that hero. You know what I mean? And if, like even, for example, like Brig, if we're just running it down main r- original Brig swinging on things, getting six K's, you know what I mean? People are going to watch. Go, Oh, my God, that hero's insane. That player's insane. Pog, you know, and they're like the, the game is it, it's it has an explosion of growth for like a, a week or two. And then bring it in line for your players that actually play the game, and, and bring it kinda back. Kind of like down. Echo, kind of like what well, Echo did. Echo, it's how, it's how it has to be. It's how it has to be, right? Like, it's be faster than Echo, game. way faster than Echo. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean Echo. I mean what you just said. Like, it has to be the way you said it, because it's like no one can compete with a new hero with the time experience that you have on other heroes. Right? That's another factor. Is like if you release a new hero and you want that hero to be shrekking up your game, they need to be broken because. Is is someone with five minutes on Sigma going to compete with ten thousand hours on Reinhardt that have been put in? No, they're not. But, and that's what developers understand as well. And I feel like it's pretty much well known developer psychology at this point. And again, the sad thing Thank is that it's not even that Blizzard don't know how to do this because they have a title that does this all the time called fucking Hearthstone, which releases like Hearthstone basically know exactly what they're doing. They always have two patches, right? They have the shit that they drop on release where the new shit is the most broken, busted, everyone has to install off the new shit, otherwise you lose. And they know what they're doing because a month later they have the perfect toned down patch ready to actually make that shit balanced. They know exactly what to do. So Blizzard can just hop on over the offices of Activision and be like, hey guys, you know, you do this thing, right? Is it good? Yeah, everyone comes and plays the new thing, guy. Like they know mm-hmm. it. It's just like, well, I mean, at this point, what does it even matter? We, we're, we're, we're talking about how new heroes should be released. Keck getting new heroes. Imagine. Yeah, someone already donated bits and said, "If only we had a new hero to do this with." <laughs> I know. <laughs> but oh. it is like again, I don't want to get too much of just like you know dev bashing and and hindsight Andes, but yeah, it's just like endemic of a sort of pattern of behavior where I feel like the, the again, if I was to put a summary on it, I'd say we always miss the boat. Like we 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 were ahead of the curve in the game and the gameplay, and then we missed the boat on everything else to do. Yep. Like everything else, we're just behind in terms of actual strategies of how to operate the game. Mm-hmm. Look, man, you're not a negative Andy if the numbers reflect what you say. I'm sorry. I it, it just it it is what it is. I think uh, I think that I, I, that take is right, Flats. I think uh, Warzone does that pretty often, and it, it does well. The thing is, like, I don't even think that's comparable to what. Okay, let me let me ask you a question because I didn't really see too much of this new character in Apex. Did that new character completely fundamentally change how the game operates, or was it just for the two weeks that he was there? Yes. So what happened was, so it was the first hero. First off, it was one of the first heroes, if not other than like one or two other things that like did damage. It was the first one to do damage through walls. It was the only thing (laughs) of its kind. So what happened in high level play is like, you know, like when the ring gets small, there's like four or 10 teams in a small circle and like they're hiding in like, one's got the first floor of the building. The other one's got the second floor. What teams were doing was the, 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 the wall hack was on like a, like a 12 second cooldown, like the burst. Like it basically created a tunnel kind of like coalescence almost like would charge up really fast and then fire. What they would do is they would shoot it and would do 30 damage to a team. And so, you know how armor works in that game is the more damage you do, the more, you know, your armor will upgrade until it hits a red. So teams would be hiding in buildings and just shooting the fucking E at each other, doing 10 damage onto a whole squad and doing 30. And they'd be waiting for the last two circles sitting there and they just farm up red armor. Like they literally just sit there and like normally they'd have to poke and stuff. They didn't have to move. They just sit there, AFK, wait until the cooldown comes back up. And then without any fear, hold E. You'd hold E and your heartbeat sensor would detect where they are. So you literally get a perfect position on where they are in the building or wherever they are outside, like hiding behind a rock or something. And then you pop the E and the entire squad gets stunned and they uh, (laughs) they take 10 damage each. And so that people were just like, oh, you're 150 off your uh, your red armor. Give me your armor. Armor swap with them. And then they would sit there and they would, for the next like three minutes, just farm the other teams around them without having to take a single ounce of damage and just farm them for, for shields. So from like a competitive standpoint, it absolutely changed the entire game and ruined it. And actually... So like there's like ratting, you know what I mean? Like your team dies, you're the last one alive. Like you try to like survive as long as you can to get higher placements so you get better points. You know what I mean? So like let's say you have like two or three KP, and then it like if you have two or three KP and die at twelve teams, you'll like lose four points or something like that, right? But if you get top five, you'll gain like 
you know, 40 or 50, right? So teams would rat it out and try to hide and try to like, you know what I mean? Like work your way yeah, up. That's incredible. Heartbeats Holy though, cow. heartbeat sensor would take that away. You'd be like, hold on, there's someone hiding in this corner over here. And you'd walk over and there's a dude crouched in the corner, not moving, hasn't made a sound in three minutes and just gets fucking destroyed. Like, you know what I mean? There was just nothing you could do about <laughs> yeah, it. You just okay. died. Okay, that does sound pretty nuts. So I, yeah, I mean, I want to agree with that. Obviously, that's fucking busted. Holy shit! I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying yeah, to like, but I, see, but I still think. Question. I think because I, I think the question Sam asked was, does it change radically the this thing of play? It does. I it agree does. with Slash that it does, but not even to the extent that Overwatch has done. Because Overwatch changes the, the the nature of game for like the entire player base, whereas with Apex, Seer was just broken as shit for the majority of people. But it, but again, they never played that game that Flats is talking about. But when it comes oh, wait, to like, wait, wait, can, I, can I ask real quick, SVB, like a mm -hmm. comparison here? Because Flats was talking about Ironclad Bastion. Would you say yeah. it was more of an Ironclad Bastion to the game, or was it a brig to the game? It was a brig to the game, I think. Where it's like, I think it's like for the for the top tier and for the pro level, it's just like completely radicalizes. But most people are mm -hmm. like, brig what? Who me galil? What is a brig? How do you play a brig? <laughs> Okay. Whereas I think like something like a, but, but the thing is with Overwatch, you can literally just be playing a different game if the meta shifts, right? You can literally go from now we play Widowmaker uh, and, and Tracer to being like now we play Symmetra May and it's literally an entirely different character setup. Yeah. So I think Overwatch yeah. is unique in that sense where it's like a, a meta shifts and literally it's not even an FPS anymore. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll give you that. I kind of, I get, I get what you're saying, Flats. All right. Um, all right. I can answer my question. That's all I got. That's all, all right. I got on that one. Yeah. I wish we, we should do that. I mean, I, I think you're right. I think the problem comes in where we just don't do it quickly enough. Uh, like, I, I, I think it's yeah, okay speed. to spice That's up the problem. Um, and then as, as for as for OpenQ, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I wish – I think the core issue that we can all agree on, right, and this has been really frustrating, is that I feel like – you, Flats and SPB, you both mentioned Band-Aid fixes that are the result of something negative. I'm trying to think of the last thing that was just implemented. I think it might have been the workshop because th that was just implemented not off of a reaction to negative feedback, but as something proactive to in in like uh, uh, improve user experience and consumer experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe maybe like uh, crossplay. Yeah, it's probably a good good answer. But I, I, what do you guys think? Is that is that a fair way to put it compared to other titles? That it was a proactive experience to make workshops. That that, that Blizzard the continuously puts things in the game, or the Overwatch team is oftentimes stuck reacting to negative things because of a it's like it was, it's why we don't have like, stacking and we're not going to get it back because like, all yeah. the complaints back in the day of. Fury, Mono, Carpe, and uh, they can and just Jonak actually make that not a thing. They could like that. It was it was Overwatch League players were con contractually banned in, in their player agreement license of of doing more than a three stack. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why. I, I don't know. I, it's it, it could absolutely be done in, in that way. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. I'll, I'll leave it to you, SVB, about what what you were saying. No, I mean. I I think that's just how it is. I think that's another aspect that we don't often go back on changes that we made, which feels really silly as well. Like, again, th there's the team stacking thing. I also think SR decay is another thing. I don't know if this is a vendetta that I'm kind of on my own on, but I'm just like, I just hate how people just farm their, like, they just SR camp, basically. And I think that's really, like, ruining ladder to quite a big degree. I don't know what it's like for you guys in GM Top 100, but again, as a hard stuck master, I can tell you, the number of people who I just get in a game with, and it's like, oh, this is their first game in five years, but the game MMR thinks that they're masters. So oh, it's, it's the end of season. I've seen nothing but that all week. And it's just, it's just like, <laughs> Bad week to stuff, ask. It's stuff like that, where it's like they had, and actually forming a pattern, it's just completely endemic of how they've done things, right? So there was a stacking thing. Then it was, we used to have SR Decay, for those not familiar. We used to have, was it like, if you didn't play in a week, you would start losing, what, like 25 a day or something like that? Mm -hmm. We basically had that. People were like, whoa, that's too much please take it back. And then it just completely did away with it. It completely dumpstered it. Whereas I think there is a reasonable middle that actually I'm keeps the fire. important core aspect of it, which is that people shouldn't just be able to farm their SR forever while not being oppressive. And then we have is another prime, can of worms, potentially, the hero ban fiasco or the hero pool fiasco, <laughs> where they implemented a change and everyone's like, we, you know, hero bans, what about hero bans? And they give us a really bad version in Hero Pools. And now they're basically going to refuse to ever go back. Like, I never, I do not see a world where Blizzard will ever revisit that idea. Because they're like, well, we tried Hero Bands. What do you mean? 
Whereas like, I wish they were just more willing to say, we tried something, it didn't work, but we're willing to go back and reassess the first thing that we did and see if we can tweak that to make it better rather than what usually ends up happening. And this happens with balance too, where it's like, oh, okay, well, we gave Cassidy 225 HP, but rather than just remove the 225 because that's so clearly busted, we'll do this to him. And it's like, just, just do the thing that we said, just go back on the thing, just please. That's why I feel anyways. Mm -hmm. Not wrong. Not wrong. It happens a lot. <sighs> Listen, boys, like I, I will say this. I, I do think that it will work out for Overwatch in the long term. 100% it just, it really, agreed. It, it really depends on how long. I really wish it didn't feel like content creators were at odds with the developers as to what needs to happen. And I will give Jeff, Jeff Kaplan credit where it's due here. That man was absolutely a, a pillar when it comes to gaming. He, he did a wonderful job of, of really making people smile when they saw him. Mm-hmm. Um, and they need that kind of person to come back and be proactive. This is kind of why, and to, to no shade to Aaron Keller, it's not his fault at all. I was a little concerned when they just announced that Aaron was just like stepping up into the role because I really think that we kind of needed someone new, new blood to come in. Like, I, obviously, I think Aaron is, is, is qualified for sure because he mm -hmm. wouldn't even be in the position there that he would be if he wasn't a legend in the gaming industry. Um, but when you look at how a lot of other companies kind of do it in other fields, they all, almost always want to bring in someone new because that someone new will be a go-getter be like, okay, it's not working here. There's no notion. There's no preconceived things of, okay, well, this obviously works. Why would we change it? We've done it forever when it's not working. You know what I mean? Like I, like I really, really hope that it doesn't take Overwatch having to clear house to get these developers and the team because in the meantime, like do the little things to work with the content creators, do the little things to start to build that ecosystem, right? Do the little things to diversify and spice up the game. I actually kind of liked the the Torb JSL patch just because it'd be a little nuts. You know what I mean? Or like to just yeah. I don't know, man. I, I guess I just Thank would like to see that kind of come back, that excitement come back, just, just the innovation Overwatch. come back. And Where is the you know, I think that it, it hasn't quite hit yet. But I think look at how people reacted to the skins this year. Like you know there's that kind of even myself i was blown away that was like i was shocked i'd never seen and i'm a tough freaking critic i'm a tough guy to please you know what i mean and it's like you know it's it's it was I'm impressive and i just kind of kind of want to see that you know it's just it would be nice to me. get back to it and i think we will i think at some point or another we absolutely will which is a good thing so flats take just, just drink some water man drink some water uh, you'll make, feel great i'm pulling uh well, j3 in real quick as we oh talk. no get him in here where's he at you know it's interesting when jay wants in yeah i know i know <laughs> <laughs> there's no show he just joined and cried and left no shot dude I <laughs> Uh, Put that uh, right there. That is the entire people. Overwatch community summed he up. Hey, Jay. What a kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, man, man. <laughs> Fuck, man. I kind of wish you didn't do that because now I'm sad. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm sad. Flats, it'll be okay. Well, I, I think Samita was, was being optimistic, and I have to concur that I think that all said and done, it's, it's, it's sad for us right now. But again, as I was saying earlier, when it's like, does it really matter if it's a little bit more dead than it was before? Because really, the, the true test of Overwatch as its future in a franchise comes whenever they release Overwatch 2. So yeah. w as long as they release that well, it that is matter. the only, only salvation either way. Like Even if we implemented 10 changes, I really don't think people are going to come back. It's going to be Overwatch 2. It's Overwatch 2 or nothing at this point. So it may, may as well be that Overwatch 2 is delayed and it comes out good. Yep. Plus one. Yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, to be honest, this kind of feels like a, a community therapy session at this point. We're just, hey, all we're of our so anger just is unleashed. And it's like, yeah, we, we do. Those. We do. This is an we Overwatch do. Anonymous. It's like, welcome to Overwatch. What's your problem? It's big. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, boys. I need to go eat dinner, man. I I appreciate the conversations, though. You guys rock. Hey, it'll it'll be look. We know it'll work out in the end. We'll we'll find a way to to keep things going in in, in the meantime. And I just hope that to see the the, the dev team opens up. The, the good news is, like, with I will say, with the stock responding the way it is right now, and then lowering guidance, or at least with the Blizzard side of things, that's a huge hit, and that is going to get the big swingers involved. So that that means that the bat is going to start to get swung here in the next six months. So be on the lookout for that. All right. All right, boys. I'll see yeah, y'all later. All right, Sam. Take it easy, yeah, dude. Thanks, man. I'm going to head out as well, Flash. Thanks for the talk, man. All right, thanks yeah, for, thanks for uh, joining me. It was a good time. It was a good time. Yeah, man. Thanks for organizing this. I think we need we need the copium these times. We need the, the therapy session. Dude, the keep, copium keep supplies saying. have run dry. I, I, need, I, need, I need the injection at this point. Out of stock. Oh, All right, man. Well, let's see if we can find it. Let's see if we can find it, man. Keep up with the good content. I'm excited for that. that whatever you got coming. And we'll, and we'll do some more shit soon. Peace yeah, out, man. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'll see you later. Thank you. The funny thing is I just came back to Overwatch 2. I feel like you have the power to pull the community together to be able to create some creative content with other creators. Because you are truly a good creator. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. It actually means a lot. Seriously. <laughs>